live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering UiPath Forward Americas 2019. Brought to you by UiPath. We're back, you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events. This has been a great event, UI Path Forward 3, the third North American event, and this is day two. We're just wrapping up. Brandon Nott is here, he's a senior vice president with UI Path, and Kedar Danny, who's the vice president of global accounts at UI Path. So you guys got a story. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, we do. Brandon, what's the story? I mean, you guys, one was a customer, and <laughs> that's, you that's right. What, what? First customer. That, yeah, that is true, first customer. Um, so three years ago, something like that, when UiPath, we just started our global expansion. Uh, we got our seed funding round in 2015. Uh, we started expanding and building our global sales team 2016. I joined in the UK, uh, responsible globally for the banking financial services industry. And uh, one, uh, one fine day, I get a, a communication, an email from a prospective customer that, hey, I want to talk to you about your platform. And uh, it was uh, Brandon over here. Brandon, do you want to tell, uh, tell them what, uh, how you found out about UiPath? Yeah, you bet. I was interviewing uh, a couple partners and looking at the different platforms and found that yeah, UiPath really had what I was looking for, which is the, the openness of the platform, the ability to do training online and, and start my journey kind of on my terms. And so when I reached out to Kadar, it was very much, how can you help me get started? I've already made the business case internally. I'm ready to go. What year was this? 2016. And, and it's interesting, Dan, Daniel Dinez last night in his keynote said, you know, we really appreciate you guys who joined us in 2016, because you know, the product didn't have all the features that we wanted. You know, it wasn't fully baked, is was my <laughs> interpretation. That's right. But, but, I, but I was saying earlier in theCUBE, the, the right move that UiPath made is you bet on simplicity. And you said, okay, let's get to market fast, yeah. simple, and, that, and you said on your terms. What do you That's mean right. by that? So, one of the things that I love about UiPath is early on there was a, a principle of, of openness. Let people download the software. Don't be afraid, don't you know, tease people and then say, come to our site and we'll give you a call, right? They said, come to our site, download. Try it yourself. Here's, there's free training. And as UiPath has grown, that principle is, is still very much present. You can go online right now and download, take free courses online. So what I wanted as a customer at that time was the ability to see it for myself. I wanted to make it real before I made the investment. That was our experience. When, I, when Bobby Patrick first started, I said, what? UiPath, who are they? He goes, go to the website, download a, a copy of our software, start building you know, automations. I'm like, huh? He goes, yeah, do it. And then go to Automation Anywhere, which by the way is the sponsor of ours. We love, we're an arms dealer, we love everybody. <laughs> you know, go to Blue Prism, get their software too. So we tried, but we couldn't. You know, it was, it was call the reseller, we'll do, a pro, what's your need? You no, know, we just want to play with it, you know? So, so that's what you mean by, by, that's right. by on, on your terms. And so, that's right. yeah, that, that's worked pretty well for you guys, hasn't it? It, it has, and uh, you know, when we started off, right, the community has always been an, uh, a, a pillar within, within UiPath's, uh, you know, kind of strategy to, to make sure that RPA is available to everyone. We call it democratization of, of uh, automation. And uh, hence, you know, availability of the community edition, uh, we go to the universities, students are able to download and uh, use it for free, and uh, now we've tied up with certain universities to expand the education system with uh, getting, um, you know, when graduates pass out, they come out ready knowing uh, UiPath RPA. Yeah, we had uh, the College of William and Mary on and Tom Clancy, they were talking about that now. You know, I, I did my little review of the predictions in the morning. Guy's predictions, he said that, that, that students that are coming out of college are going to force the RPA on their companies. Yeah. Most college kids don't know what RPA is. <laughs> I got, you know, I said, it's going to take a couple of cycles here, but, but then, so, okay. So, Brenda, why did you join UiPath, like, how did that all, you know, what, what drove you to say, okay, this is it, I'm going to, instead of applying the technology to yeah. make my existing company better, I'm going to. So I ran operations for a mortgage company, and we, we had already automated everything that we could using the classic tools. And we were winning awards, and it was, you know, people were, were looking at the work that we were doing, and, and they were impressed, but I still couldn't get past a certain point in my automations. So bringing in UiPath allowed me to, to continue that journey, to keep automating. 
and after a while, the more that, that I was working with UiPath, we were, uh, I was a guest of, of them at conferences, speaking with Guy Kirkwood and any number of folks, I, I, I looked at the culture of the company and thought, this is a place that I, I want to be. And I looked at the, the roadmap and where the product was going and what I was able to do with it as a customer, and I thought, I want to help other people do this. I, I want to help them on their journey get to this next level of automation that they're currently they're, they're being capped at. Yeah, well, a lot of people hopping on the bandwagon. Uh, <laughs> so, folks from AWS, you know, uh, have joined. Uh, gentleman I know from Google yeah. has joined. I mean, these are you know, leading companies. And Correct. So how are you guys spending your time these days? So, uh, as I, my, my title suggests, you know, I'm responsible for the global account portfolio, uh, and I'm spending most of my time with our customers, trying to help them on their automation journey. So, these are some of the largest global customers, uh, big insurance companies, uh, automobile industry, uh, you know, titans in that industry, and uh, they've all been our customers now for the last two years and three years, with a plan to kind of uh, change the way they, uh, they run their business, right? And RPA and UiPath, basically the automation platform that we have now with our new release come out as well, is giving these customers an end-to-end -end, uh, transformation engine. So it is uh, our responsibility now to make them um, you know, more knowledgeable on how to apply that technology and get them successful with their plans for uh, you know, transformation and automation of their business processes. Right, and how are you spending your time, Brad? I'm in product and, and my focus is attended automation. So classically, people are implementing unattended automation. This, this was the first big wave of RPA. It was really robots just working on a server somewhere, you don't, you don't interact with them, they just do their thing 24 hours a day. Now there's a huge push into attended automation, which is having a, a robot on your computer, and the two of you working together, collaborating in real time throughout your day. So we're, we're looking to save time, to take out the, the wasteful small processes that nobody wants to do, as well as create entirely new opportunities for value based on what the two of you can do together. How, how are you guys thinking about the way in which a, a user, a worker interacts with that, that bot, uh, yeah. that, with that automation? I think it's it's more like a dance and, and less like a, a task manager, right? So you might think in classic automation, you know, click a button, go do this thing. Click a button, go do that thing. The, the, the automation is happening when you want it to. The way that our platform is written, the robot can listen to what you're doing. It can monitor for when you click on a specific button or for when you move files to a folder. So think about it less like a conscious effort to, to guide the robot and more as a, 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 a collaborative uh, you know, effort where, where the robot is seeing what you're doing and, and taking action to help you and, and do things on your behalf and then letting you know when they're done. So it's, the paradigm is changing for work and when you have a robot on your computer, it, it's going to open up a new way of doing your, your daily and, activities. And, and the enabler there is what? Machine learning, uh, machine intelligence? It's a combination of things. So think about machine learning and, and AI as just one tool that that robot has to use. OCR as well. You know, we, we did a demo earlier this week where we took receipts, moved them to a folder, the robot sees that you've moved receipts into a folder, can bounce it off an endpoint that, and, and break apart those receipts using OCR, load that all into Excel and, and help you with your expense report. Mm -hmm. So think about things like this, you, things you need to do, you do what you would normally do, put receipts in a folder, and the robot takes care of the rest. What, what things can um, humans do that machines can't? Yeah, the ability to make on the fly judgment for complex cognitive tasks is very, very hard to replicate in, in AI right now because typically models are, are built on a set of specific information. We build our, our receipt and our invoice model off a ton of receipts and invoices. Therefore, the robot can make quick work of those receipts way, way faster than we can. But present an unstructured problem or an open-ended problem, and an AI model might 
really struggle, whereas a human can instantly make a judgment on that. So we want computers to do that, those, those compiled activities you know, with the AI models that make sense for what they're doing, and we want humans to be thinking at higher levels, at, at creative levels higher cognitive, cognitive and, and decision-making levels. So this is, as Daniel and others had mentioned, elevating the, the humanity when you think about it. But you definitely see some of your customers are you know, certainly talking about this, is, is robots taking action, yeah. systems of agency, some people call it, you know, on behalf of the human. And you know, having to essentially make certain decisions, but you're saying those decisions are well understood and safe, <laughs> essentially. Absolutely, when you deploy a robot, you, you, don't, you don't just kind of hope for the best, yeah. right? You have a very specific use case and you've coded yeah. the robot for that use case. I love it when, when people say, you know, our compliance team is worried about the robots going wild or <laughs> you know, wreaking havoc on the systems. But it can't do anything that you haven't consciously told it to do, ha haven't written it to do. So it turns out it's actually even more compliant because it can throw off logs and a paper trail as, as complex as you want it. So if I were a compliance officer, I would say, get robots in immediately because I want more visibility into what's yeah. being done. So where do you see your customers you know, going? Uh, so our customers, so if you, uh, as uh, Brandon was saying earlier, you know, customers started with this unattended robots first mm -hmm. uh, because everyone was trying to get efficiency in their back office. Quick ROI. Quick ROI. And that, that is actually the core foundation for what comes next, which is the attended automation, the robot for every person vision that we have uh, we have for, for the, for the the entire uh, global uh, customer community of ours. I mean, the number of use cases where uh, a human agent works with a robot now, uh, with having a robot on every desktop, I mean, simple things like expense reports, timesheets, uh, or even simple things like downloading emails and reports on a daily basis. You don't need to engage with multiple systems as a, as a human agent. You can get the robot to go ahead and do that for you, and as Brandon was saying, you know, you have much better control with the robot doing it than a human being who has a mind, who could uh, potentially, uh, you know, cause uh, certain uh, security or compliance related issues. Mm. Uh, because a human agent could go easily off track, do something different, whereas the robot has a certain set of parameters within which they work. All right guys, we got to wrap, so I'm going to ask each of you, give us the bumper sticker on UI Path Forward 3. Uh, when the trucks are pulling away from the Bellagio, what's the bumper sticker say, Brendan? Try and keep up. <laughs> yeah, go go big, go big, and go big now. Yeah, the, go big or, or go home, this kind of <laughs> seems to be the theme here. Well guys, yeah. thanks very much for Thank for you very much. Out. Great, congratulations on all the success. You guys got a lot of work to do still, yeah, for yep. sure, and, uh, and best of luck. Thank you very much. Very right, welcome, and thank you for watching everybody. This is a wrap from uh, UiPath Forward. You watching theCUBE, go to siliconangle.com, check out all the news, we got a bunch of uh, in-depth coverage of this show, RPA, uh, in general we have five shows this week, so so check that out, and of course, go to thecube.net to see what will be next week. Another big week, October, has become the new May. So thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. Thanks, guys. Great job today. We'll see you next time.